behind her near us, causing Sarah and I to step back as Diana began to speak, her voice booming through the air. The cheers around us became silent. Friends, we have won this battle, but they will not be gone for long. This is the beginning of a war to end tyranny, to end chaos. I could tell that every demon in the area had their ears and hearts open to Diana. I felt myself become full of courage just from listening to her speak. You have shown great courage today, but you must build even more for the war ahead. The Demon Lord will try to cut you down, but we will prevail as I am the last living heir to this grand kingdom. I swear unto you all that I will fight until the very end and free this world of the evil that is the Demon Lord. With this, I urge you to stand with me and fight by my side, not as my subjects, but as my brothers and sisters. I ask now, who will stand with me? The sound came from after, uh, I came after, was loud and eardrum piercing. The sound of a thousand screams beat through the air and showed the allegiance of every demon in the area, and then some. I could only stare in awe as Diana took in everyone's cheers and took in a heavy breath. It was then that I knew that I had become part of something grand at the side of a woman who would change history. The following days were full of chaos. The demon lord tried to come back and reclaim his pride, but Diana said something like, you bitch giving him more wounds than inflicted before. It was like the castle became an impregnable fortress. Soon, word spread around how cool we were, the neighboring kingdoms, the demon lords defeat, and continued to fail attempts about the attacks and shit. Many leaders sent messages of allegiance, which Diana humbly accepted, and soon enough, we drove the demon lord's army far back away from us. After every battle, she would wind up in my arms. Much to the slightly obvious disapproval of Sarah, but that was a bitch. Whenever a demon questioned my presence, Diana would simply wave them off with a small token of praise towards me. She is my most honored guest, and she is here to help us win this war. I'm a dude. Still, the thought of that we are officially were, uh, we officially were, uh, the thought of what we officially were began to make me concerned. Did Diana see me more than an energy source and ally? We had kissed before we returned, but since then, I could I couldn't have been more unsure. I began to question myself. Why was I here? I could only shake my head in response. I shouldn't doubt anything. We were in the midst of a war, and with Diana at the front, she had many responsibilities. Many that I could never even hope to think on. The pinnacle moment of our relationship, however, came when a brute demon stormed into the castle all on his own. He was unarmed and carrying a single item which made many demons step away from him in fright. What the fuck? Diana, Sero, and I were in the war room. Wait, what the fuck is this? Is this Sero now? Is this like, is this how Sero looks on off days? What the fuck ever. In the, wait, 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 wait. In, in the war room with three other beings whom I have had named Faye, Rabbit, and Shadow for simplicity. When the doors to the room swung open, everyone was forced to turn their heads from the map we were previously poring over. Whoa! What is... You fucking get it. All protests became silent as the being who entered chucked the object onto his, uh, in his hand onto the table. As it settled to a stop in the middle of the map, all the demons in the room stared in absolute shock. It's just... It's cloth. Lying on the table was a red, broken horn. Oh, it's a horn. There was no blood or bone in it. It was indeed the horn of a being who had stormed in. I became confused, wondering why this was being decided to throw the horn at us. As I looked over to Diana, however, I could see the shock in her eyes. The expression on her face was a mixture of fear, surprise, and a little flattery. Like someone had given her an exotic bouquet of bloody thorn-filled roses. Diana looked up at the demon who had entered the room and examined him. Brute demon. What is the meaning of this? What does it look like? It looks like you're swearing your allegiance to the rebellion. The question is why. He swore allegiance with his horn? It's a brute demon tradition. 
if they leave their tribe to serve a non-nomadic kingdom without marrying into it, then they must break a horn in allegiance. However, from what I recall, there are no more tribes left in the demon world after the demon lord's mass genocide of the brute demons. I stared wide-eyed at Shadow. Mass genocide? What is this, Undertale? The demon lord had that much power to eliminate an entire demon race? I looked to the brute demon, seeing him glare hard at Shadow at his remark. Well, he didn't kill everyone. So there are more of you? Flash of grief flashed in the brute's eyes. God, there's more words than flash! There's more words you can use! There's more! You can do this, man! Try! Please! Before he looked down at the table. No, I'm the only one left and I refuse to let that bastard get away with this. I felt incredibly terrible for the grief that he had to bear. It must have been horrible for the last of his kind, or to be last of his kind. I looked to Diana, wondering what she would do with this information. The look on Diana's face was enigmatic. She was obviously in deep thought, but how was she going to handle the situation before her? Finally, she took in a breath and let us sigh before speaking. Sir Brute, you come swearing your allegiance to the Rebellion. Is there anything you demand of us for your service? It was the question she asked every Alliance leader. They often asked for the promise of freedom or another protection from harm. The demons who were with us in the room simply joined out of their own interests. What about this demon? The brute demon rolled his shoulder back and stared at the heart of Diana, making her straighten up a bit. I ask for you to perform ascending. The fuck is that? Ascending? For the souls of your people? The brute nodded before stepping up and placing his large hand on the table, staring at the back of it, the, uh, at it, and it, it, wait, what? Staring at the back of it in torn shame. My people did not deserve death, but their ashes now lie in the earth. There is no one who can give them a proper sending, so I ask that you, Succubus, do this for me in return for my service. <sighs> I looked at Faye, hoping they would explain, but Diana turned to me and spoke instead. Dear. Ascending is a ritual brute demons perform to honor their deceased. It is a ritual of both celebration and grief, so it must be done with a full heart. Huh? Oh! Thanks. Diana smiled at me and nodded before turning back to the brute. I was happy that she was still willing to teach me despite her position. The brute, however, finally took notice of me and glared. A human? What is it doing here? Suck a dick, brute! Excuse me, it? I became suddenly irritated and stepped forward to confront the demon, but Diana placed her hand on my shoulder and cleared her throat. She is a vital part of this war, Sir Brute. Please do not disrespect her. I'll fuck you up. Don't make me, don't make me get my boys, bitch. I looked at Diana, seeing her press her lips together in a fine line and stare into the brute's soul. A part of me felt extremely flattered in protection. However, I could practically feel Sarah's jealous aura from the other side of Diana. The brute took a hard stare at me before eventually nodding and crossing his arms. So, will you do it? No, she gonna do shit for you, man. Fuck off. <sighs> Diana took a moment to herself, staring at the wooden table in thought. I began to ponder as well about it. He seemed to be a worthy ally, but Diana seemed torn. Was it appropriate for a demon who wasn't a brute to do it? Don't fucking say shit! After a moment, Dana turned to the brute demon and nodded. Very well. I will perform the sending of your fallen kid. When? This afternoon. Everyone hitched their breath in surprise at Diana's words. She would perform the same day? Did she even know how to perform it properly? Diana? With a chuckle, Diana looked at me with a small smirk. I'll be fine, dear. I know a fair amount of brute demon rituals. Okay. The afternoon became full of hustle. Servants were rushing back and forth, trying to prepare for a ritual they knew little to nothing about. Luckily, Shadow and Rabbit helped instruct everyone properly. I was taken to my room, given an opportunity to rest, but as I sat on the bed, I felt restless. I didn't want to sit around and do nothing for the day, and there was, there was much I could do, despite being a human. I, I wasn't some decoration. 
I defied my instructions and wandered, hoping to find Diana. I wanted to help her if possible, but as I approached the room she was practicing and I managed to catch a pair of voices. My lady, I must insist. Insist that I lock her in her room like a prisoner? Out of the question. You fuck! I quietly pressed myself against the wall near the doorway and continued to listen in, now wondering what was going on. She is not a pet or a slave, Sero. She is my guest and greatest ally. I understand this, but she's also a human. Every time someone new comes to forge an alliance with the Rebellion, the human's presence is questioned. If they are turned away by a mere human, then they are worthless allies. My lady, you are not understanding my point. Then what is the point, Sano? A small silence followed. I was in awe that Diana was defending me so hard. As for Sero, I began to hear the jealous beast he was hiding. What was he going to do? My point is that people are questioning what she is to you. <sighs> the question pained me to realize, but I was curious as well. What was I to her? She vouched for me as an ally, but she didn't like me as I liked her. I came with her to fix this world, but I truly came for the pussy. After a painfully long silence, Diana spoke again. I care for her. <gasps> Very much so. Like I care for you, what? Sarah. She is very important to me. For many reasons. She has become part of my life. And anyone who questions why will be silenced. Fuck! Dude, I don't want to fucking get in bed with this gentleman in the fucking toe as well. Fuck that shit. No, he's got to go or I go. He's going or I'm going. None of that bullshit, okay? Fuck your polygamy bullshit. Is that enough to appease you? It is not my place to be appeased. I took a breath, taking in what Diana said. She cared for me. I wasn't sure whether to feel happy or sad at that, but I had to take in that she cared enough to protect me and defend me. I didn't get to feel emotion for long, however, as Faye flew up beside me and grinned. I panicked for a moment hoping that they wouldn't give away my position, but they whispered to me, understanding. Psst. We're about to go prepare the ritual dance area thing. Uh, whatever. Wanna come watch? I opened my mouth to object, but was stopped by a Diana's voice. Now, please, leave me be. I have to prepare, and cannot afford any more distractions. I grimaced. I came to help, but I guess she had work to do she had to work alone. I left with Faye, not wanting to be caught by Sarah and understanding that she needed to be alone to work. This ritual seemed very important to her and the brute demon that demanded it for her. Of her, I'm sorry. In truth, I was excited to see Diana go through with it. I, The fact that she was willing to dance for the brute demon was surprising. Dance? Uh, uh, she's gonna dance? Okay. When Faye and the handful of demons that helped them with finish their work... I stood in the front line of the crowd surrounding the area. To say that I was mildly nervous for her was an understatement. Did Diana even know how to do the scenting? From what she insinuated to me, she was she brought me to as she brought me to my room, she would be given instructions and follow them to a T. Would she be able to do it? A small quiet wave of gasps came toward my direction, causing me to look over at where they originated from. I stared wide-eyed at what I saw. Diana? Ah! Uh, why are you wearing clothes, girl? Put them- Take them off! Take them off, girl! What, what are you doing? Take them off! Take off her clothes! I spit on my mind, you fuck. No. 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 Shit. Stop it. Get off, the, get off there. That's gross. What are you doing? Disgusting. Diana was dressed in some sort of dancer garb with purple paint over her already tainted skin, shaping symbols around her body, and her hands were two large sabers glowing in the sunlight. She was absolutely stunning. Diana stepped between the crowd as they parted ways for her, and into a chalk-drawn circle which separated the ritual area and the ones watching it. Her bare feet guided her to the center of the, as a couple of the other demons, each holding an instrument, set up near the edge away from where I was. At last, the air was filled with complete silence. 
the look on Diana's face showed... Oh, I'm sorry, that was the, the... The look on Diana's face showed pure concentration and focus as she closed her eyes and took a deep breath. The drums echoed through the air as the dance finally began. I stared mesmerized by what I was watching. Diana's entire body moved in time with the beat, and instruments floating through the air. The sabers which she was holding glided through the air, as if they were slicing it with perfect ease. As the beat moved, her, her, her hips and shoulders rolled fiercely, like a hypnotic, passionate belly dance routine mixed with an African tribal step. However, her focus remained on the sabers and her hand as the circle she was instructed to dance within. Her bare feet hit the ground hard with her knees jutting into the dirt, not hard enough to serve the soil, but loud enough to echo alongside the drum beat. The, my breath has been taken away by the sight. However, I wasn't the only one blown away by the dancing of She's Cubis. beautiful. Shut isn't the she? fuck up, Sarah. Fuck you, man. You're gonna do some bullshit. You're an asshole. I didn't turn my head away, but I could tell that Sarah had stepped up to stand beside me and watch Diana dance. The two of us stood side by side, watching the person we both cared about give homage to an extinct alien race. I'm sorry, it's demon. Sarah's voice was barely audible over the sound of drums and the chants in the air. I love her. Fuck you! That stopped my thoughts. I looked over to Sarah, seeing his gaze still plastered towards Diana. His expression was cool and like stone, serious in what he had said and he meant. He loved her. I've loved her ever since we were children. I've been by her side through everything, and she's given meaning to my life. I would give my life for her if she demanded it. Fuck you! God, you piss me off, Sarah! At last, Sarah looked at me, a small fire burning in his eyes through his gaze. I could see the devotion and truth in his soul, knowing how deeply he cared what to say Diana. To that? I don't wanna fucking say shit! She loves me. Or I love her too. She loves me. I could feel Sarah's gaze on me become stone cold, but I didn't care. I loved Diana and I didn't want him to have her. Not after the things I had seen in my dreams. Oh shit! Oh shit! I continued to watch Diana. She already made her choice. You should respect that and leave her alone. I was given silence as Sarah's reply. However, I could feel the air change from the warm and comfortable to cold and almost frightening. I didn't care. I could win this. Diana's dance continued into the night, surprising me. She had this much stamina. Despite watching her, she didn't stop to break once, most likely expending her energy to keep moving. How long did the dance have to go for? As the torch lights illuminated the space and the moon was at the top of the sky. Hold on, how long? Those swords were being glistened by sunlight when she started dancing. And now the moon is at the top of the sky? How long have you been dancing? What? Okay. Diana finally stopped, panting hard and clashing the sabers together to cause a ring of steel to bounce through the air. The audience clapped wildly, main, many deeply, captivated enough to stay the entire time as some joined in during the later hours of the ritual. The brute, who's, uh, whom I decided to dub as Sergeant, stepped from the crowd into the ritual space and walked towards Diana, letting the sabers vanish into the air. Diana looked at the one approaching her with a tired stare. Silence lingered between them as Sergeant held out his arm to Diana. With a smile, Diana reached out and clasped her hand onto his forearm. Honorimus dirigendo pedes. That's not words. Victoria in consumatione. You guys are saying gibberish. Another round of cheers echoed through the air as the words exchanged between them. I smiled knowing that Diana had appeased the sergeant and his people. Diana released her hold on his hand and nodded to him before looking towards me and ushering me to her. I quickly rushed over as she lifted her arm and placed it along my shoulders tiredly. Diana... I need a little help. <laughs> okay. I could feel Sarah's gaze on my back. Would he step in and fight me as he sh asked? Wait, 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 what? Would he step in and fight me doing as she asked? I looked back to see him holding back a glare. His eyes flashed a soft white, revealing the crosses in his black irises as he simmered in his spot. With a laugh to Diana, I led her back to my room. 
where she sat tiredly on the bed. The exertion or exhaustion in her face was clear, and her body quaked from odor exerting itself. <sighs> you danced so beautifully, Diana. With a smile, Diana looked up at me and blushed a bit. To see her face go a slight pink made her look so adorable. You flatter me, dear. You're goddamn right. I could only smile before she slowly stood back and took my hand, surprising me. She kept her head down, however, which made me even more confused as to what she was doing. D Diana. Dear, I'm sorry. Huh? For what? Diana grimaced a bit before looking up at me with serious eyes. They flipped back and forth between red and gold, but she stood her ground. For the intolerance from my kind. Humans aren't exactly welcomed in this world. You don't say. That's what this was about. I understood completely, but it seemed to hit Diana the hardest. After all, she was the one who brought me to this world. I cupped Diana's cheek and smiled at her. I smacked her on the ass and called her Nana, causing her expression to go from shame to surprise. Diana, it's all right. I love you. Diana hitched her breath. It was true, though. I had grown to love her for everything she had done. She was brave, powerful, beautiful, everything I desired in a person. My heart beat wildly for her, and I could only pray that she understood my feelings. <laughs> Diana looked to our hands. <laughs> Diana looked to our hands, her eyes watering a bit. I instinctively wiped her eyes a bit with my fingers, now concerned. D Diana. I... I don't know what love is. I'll teach you. With my tongue. I stared dumbfounded. She didn't know what love was. However, she surprised me by placing a gentle, shaking hand on my cheek, leaning in. But I'm willing to learn, if it's with you. Yes! I gasped slightly seeing the earnest and care in her eyes before she closed them and gently placed a kiss on my cheek. A soft shudder ran down my spine as I felt her soft lips press against my skin. Uh, all right, um, I might need to hide this. I don't know where this is gonna go. Kiss her. I couldn't take it anymore. I needed to kiss her. I pulled Diana close and wrapped my arms around her neck, capturing her lips with my own. She gasped, surprised at my sudden eagerness, but slowly began to melt into the kiss between us. Her lips were as heavenly as this night, and I first tasted them. Okay, it's actually no visuals. We're good. Her arms gently wrapped around themselves, uh, wrapped themselves around my waist, pulling me close to her body. The jangle of a brute dancer god echoed in the room. Making me smile slightly at the surprise noise, I had nearly forgotten that she was still in her dancer outfit. On their own, my fingers slowly danced down her shoulders and traced them over the seams of her outfit, and her body shuddered ever so slightly. Was she enjoying a mere touch that much? Or was she hungry for energy? I pulled away slightly, seeing her eyes dance down between red and gold, some control trying to be maintained within her gaze and me. She was out of energy. And she needed more than just a kiss. For now, I'm gonna take it slow. I leaned back and kissed her again, this time biting her lower lip and enticing her to let go of the control she had. I wanted her to relax, for me to be the one to comfort her and hold her against me. Maybe it was because of the call of her succubus body had on me, but maybe it was because my heart desired to be somewhere there. I didn't know there. I didn't care much. But I obeyed the command of my heart to drive her to the pleasure palace that we both all craved. The night would be for us, and the warmth of the afterglow would be exquisite. Diana released an almost carnal moan. All right, I think we're done. <laughs> I'm gonna get banned. We're done. We're done. We're out. <laughs> we can't. We can't. We're gonna get fucking banned. <laughs> I can't, guys. You got. You got. <laughs> I gotta tap out. I can't. I just can't, dude. <laughs> we'll get fucking banned so hard. <laughs> I can't. <laughs>
Oh god. Ah. What a game. What a game. Ah. Alright. Well. Sorry. <laughs> sorry for blue balling you guys. I know. I know you guys all had it out and you were getting ready to whack the putty, but I mean. We, we gotta tap it somewhere before this becomes a fucking stick'em stream. <laughs> no, keep reading, no balls, keep it. No, man. No, man, I, c I can't do it. I can't do it, man. We got fucking banned, dude. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> oh, what a game. It's. That was surprisingly. Like. Like, some points were pretty cool. I'm not gonna deny, it was pretty cool the music.